This is my origin story. I'm going to tell you how I've come to be where I'm at, an indie, indie recording artist in Nashville. And in 2014, the fall of 2014, I was living in South Dakota, had my own business, and I was, I was struggling because my business wasn't really successful. It was a snack food business. And... I was living in a really crappy one one bedroom apartment that uh, the view from the main bay window or the 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 main window in the living room was basically a old rusty appliance graveyard where there were washers and refrigerators that the neighbor the property that was adjacent just had I don't know they just threw a bunch of stuff back there and didn't, it was their private property so they could do whatever they wanted. And there was no fence in between and I had to look at that every time I looked out. And even the apartment that I was in even had, there was a rat in my apartment one time. And I remember being on the couch late at night and I could hear him or her, or whatever kind of rat it was, going around the couch that I was laying on. I mean, that's really scary stuff. And I could hear them in the kitchen. He would come in at like at three in the morning and rustle for stuff. So I, one night I set one of those, uh, one of those traps, the, the gummy traps. And I woke up about three in the morning. There was all kind of clatter. And what had happened is he had gotten caught in that. And, but he was strong enough to, to force himself and go through the underneath the door and then the trap was still on my side of the door. So then, anyway, I finally got the rat by, by poisoning him, having water out and putting poison in the water. And uh, yeah, that was the place I was living in. And my business wasn't, wasn't successful. Uh, two years prior to that, I had been completely betrayed by the, by the partner that I had. Uh, he, even though we were struggling, he, he left, I found out later that he had been planning it for a year on the computer. He, he was really my employee slash partner and I had provided the computer for him. I mean, I was paying all the bills and once we got successful because of he brought, of what he brought to the table, he was going to be able to participate and have part owner of the company. But ne that never worked out because we never really got prosperous and he pl planned his exit like a year before. Because I got, on, I was able to get on the computer that I had supplied him it was my computer, and that he'd used, and he had been planning this for like a year. It was devastating to me because I thought we were close friends, and anyway, he took seventy five percent of the customers that I did have, and it was extremely low point in my life at that point in time. But I recovered from that, and I spent the next two years trying to make the business survive, and I and I made some progress, but it was still really not succeeding. No matter what I tried, I tried every possible thing I could think of. And it just, I couldn't get, I couldn't get traction. So in the fall of 20, 2014, an old friend of mine who had been vice president of my company and retired uh, CPA or accountant, and he came into my office, a very mild mannered guy, Bob, came into my office. And that day it was like he had, he was a different, had a different demeanor. He came in and, and carried himself a little differently. It was like he was on a mission. And he came into my office and he was very powerful and he said, what are you doing? You're beating your head against the wall. This business is never going to be successful. You're never going to make it. Uh, you're going to continue to be treading water, so to speak. I mean, no matter how long you do this, why don't you quit now, restructure your debt and sell some assets and uh, Pursue your dreams, pursue your passions, music, traveling the world. He knew that I, I love traveling the world and that uh, he said, do it while you still have your health. He says, I have a friend who's very wealthy, but he can't, he has like 10% lung capacity, Bob's friend, and he can't uh, get out of his couch. His big, his big trip every, every week is he, once a week, he gets up and manages to get himself to the grocery store to get his groceries, and that basically exhausts him for the rest of the week. And he said, I would give all my money to have my health. So while you have your health, take advantage and pursue your dreams. I mean, I'm, I'm very healthy. I don't, I don't have any issues at all. So 
I grew up on a farm, and the ma- mantra of a farm, never sell the land, 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 because you have this spiritual connection with the land, and you never even considering consider selling the land. Well, I had a considerable amount of land holdings, and I had a lot of debt from my from the business that I was trying to get off the ground, the snack food business. But I never sat down. I'm a spreadsheet guy. I never sat down and take taken a look to see if I could sell some land and restructure my debt and somehow have a, enough to to live off of. I mean, I do spreadsheets. I, I was always doing spreadsheets. And I'd never done that spreadsheet. But my friend, I believe that he was on a mission from God that day. I really do. And uh, he convinced me. And right as soon as he left, I, I pulled out my spreadsheet and or pulled out my Excel and I did a spreadsheet. And sure enough, if I sold a parcel or two of land, I could restructure and still pay down my debt, the remaining debt, and have enough to live on. I mean, I, I'd never run I'd never run those numbers. And I'm a numbers guy. It's one of the things I do. So I mean I thank Bob for that. Completely changed my my life. I I put some land up for sale, got it sold that spring, and uh, started exiting my business, sold my building, sold my equipment, and bought a house. My banker was kind enough to let me take enough money from the land sale to buy a house and free and clear, no lien on it. Bought a house in, in uh, Watertown. And I also he allowed me to buy uh, my luxury car. So, I mean, he was very good to me, my, my banker. I mean, he could have demanded all of that money to go against the loan, but he didn't. So suddenly my life changed. And now what am I going to do? Well, I'm pursuing my music. I'm pursuing music. This is 2015. And I wasn't sure what kind of music. I, I tried Taxi, which is a good organization. And they mainly focus on sync and and instrumental music. And I tried that without a lot, hardly any success, little success. And I was playing in a cover band at the time. And then I realized what I really wanted to do is write songs, and I'd been focused on songwriting. And so I still, my father was ill, so I really couldn't consider leaving uh, South Dakota. I, was, I would take care of him. I'd go see him every week, and uh, sometimes twice a week. And I was there to take him to the hospital if he had to go to the hospital. Well, he passed away in uh, 2017. Still miss him every day. And... So after I, cl- I had to handle the estate, which took about six months because there's a lot of land, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of equipment, a lot, of, a lot to be done. My dad was a farmer, had a lot of, accumulated a lot of stuff. And handling the estate was, I worked on it for three and a half months full time. <laughs> uh, it's a lot. Anyway, after I got that done, I moved to Nashville. And I moved to Nashville around October of 2017. And so now, as I'm doing this video, this is May of 2019, so about a year and a half. Been in Nashville about a year and a half. And I um, decided that I was going to pursue being an artist, write my own songs. At first, at first when I came to Nashville, Nashville is all about songwriting. And there's a lot of organizations to help you get better at writing songs, but the, 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 even when you submit songs for them to critique and look at, they're thinking about it, well, if you need to do this to get it cut. And there's really not much focus on a couple of things that I would say are a little bit weaker in Nashville. Nashville's a great city. I love it here. Uh, it's a, still a honeymoon phase for me here, living here. Um, I've got my studio where I'm at. I mean, things are, are pretty good, but I'm not. I'm still you know, trying to figure out my place. And I originally thought, well, the ideal scenario for me would be to get a publishing deal. Publishing deal is where you, a publisher will give you a draw, a monthly draw against future earnings. And with the idea that the songs you write will eventually somehow catch and that you will be able to pay back your, your, your draw that they've given you, the accumulated draw. Because it's really a loan. And they typically give a small of a draw of $20,000 a year. I mean, how do you live on that? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of songwriters have to do alternative you know, side gigs. Once they get to $100,000, I remember one publisher who said, I, I can do the draw until we get to about six figures, and then I get really nervous. So, so they may sever their relationship with you, and you, you don't have to pay the money back, but you're suddenly without a, without a job. Anyway, 
but you're writing songs always with the thought of for someone else to cut. And when I first came to Nashville, I thought maybe that's what I'd try to do. And I quickly decided that no, that's not what I want to do. I want to write songs and sing my own songs. And I mean, I, a bit, I really came to a realization, you know, what did I want for my success story? What did I want to accomplish? And I had these visions of, I still do, I still have a visions of, of reaching great heights with my music. And, you know, the more people that I could reach, my goals would be, you know, that I can reach as many people as possible, uh, have sold out tours, and even win awards for my artistry and my songwriting. I mean, I think every, every uh, musician and songwriter has those wishes. But what I really wanted to do was to, to reach people emotionally and also to accomplish something to really, I thought th this is something uh, that is pretty nerdy, but Maslow's Pyramid, if you studied Maslow's Pyramid back in school, it's a pyramid of basic needs for for human beings. And you start at the bottom with the basic needs for survival, like clothing and food and shelter. Uh, and then I think there's four levels. The next level up is social interaction, things like that. And as you go up into the very top of the pyramid, there's only one thing listed at the very top and it's called self-actualization. And what is self-actualization? Well, I suppose it's a little different for each person, but for me, it's about using all the gifts that God has given me reaching as many people as possible, whether I make them laugh, make them cry, make them feel something that hopefully I can sing a song that will make them feel the same thing that I felt when I wrote the song. And also, I mean, let's be honest, respect, respect, respect drives me. I mean, the demand or the requirement, the, the interest of having respect of others, accomplishments, accomplishing something, uh, doing something that's very difficult and reaching a plateau or reaching a level that frankly is hard to do. So with all of these out external measures of success is what I was thinking about. And the, you're set up, you're setting yourself up for failure thinking that way, and I was. And uh, there's a lot of harsh critiques. I mean, I moved to Nashville, I was in Nashville a short while, and I was working with this, this producer, Grammy nominated producer, and I, I paid him to listen to some of my songs and because we were gonna pick the best songs for, for recording or reworking. And he's listening to one of my songs and he makes the comment that my guitar playing is at a grade school level. I'm playing at grade school licks. That was pretty devastating. I mean, this guy's a Grammy nominated producer. You should know what he's talking about, right? And uh, my guitar is probably the thing that I've been, it's been the thing I've been doing the longest. So, uh, you know, it's like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger would, you know, was great at, at psyching out his opponents when he was a bodybuilder. And say one of his opponents had small calves, was one of the weak body part. And, he, and between, and at the end, uh, Schwarzenegger only competed in one, one competition a year. Mr. Olympia, I think it was. It's been a while since I read his book. And he won that consecutively for a number of years, I believe. But he would only compete in that. And so maybe the last year, the guy had a weak point in his calves. And so everybody gets back together one year later. You've had a whole year to try to rework your body. And say so there's an individual who that individual had was a weakness was his calves. He worked really hard on his calves. And Schwarzenegger would know that, Arnold, and would say, hey, with this accent, hey, you're looking pretty good. But man, those calves, you still need to do some work on those calves. And it was something that the guy was proud of that he'd finally overcome it. Uh, and then Schwar Arnold just put him, just completely deflated his, deflated his balloon and that would help Arnold win the contest. So Arnold was a master of mind games as well. So it's kind of like the same thing, you know, where you think your best talent is playing guitar and then you're told by a producer that, you know, you basically suck is, uh, it's hard to take. I beg to differ. I'm definitely playing guitar at beyond a, a, high, a grade school level, but being under there, that's his opinion. So, and there are other other comments. You know, uh, not everyone likes my singing. My singing is pretty polarizing. 
some people, I've been told, I have a great voice, phenomenal voice. Some people say you shouldn't be singing. So, you know, I think of that's probably a good thing because I don't want to be, if you polarize, that means that you, uh, like my vocal coach said, that Prince, when he first came out, the majority of people hated him. And uh, the people that liked him loved him. But if you can polarize, if you can get a polar reaction, if you're right in the middle and people are like, ah, it's okay, and not a strong reaction either way, you'd much rather be an extreme love or extreme hate from people because then you're at least eliciting reaction. So in my, what's, what's happened in my mind, I guess one, one light bulb moment for me was I was watching a video about Imogen Heap, who is a Grammy-winning artist and producer, engineer from uh, the UK, and she was being interviewed. And she was asked by the interviewer, you know, what's your definition of success? And she said, as long as you're able to do what you love, which is playing music, that's my definition of, de definition of success. If I can do that and continue, continue to do that day in and day out, I'm successful. And I'm like, yeah, Imogen, you're right. I'm able to do this. I'm successful right now. I mean... How far, how many people hear my music? How many, how many people I reach? You know, hopefully it'll be more, but I'm still successful right at this moment because I'm doing what I love and I enjoy it. I mean, I'm living the dream. I mean, people ask me, how are you doing? I typically respond, living the dream because I am. I'm living the dream. I mean, I'm able to write music, play music, uh, work on my craft, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, I work hard at it. I work really hard at it. I work like 60 hours a week, keep track of what I spend time on, what gets tracked uh, improves. And so I keep track of every hour that I spend. I have a spreadsheet. Again, spreadsheet guy, remember I mentioned? Keep a spreadsheet. So I'm working hard and I, and I, have, I have goals, but I'm successful right now. So that's the way I view it. And uh, as long as I'm able to do what I love, which I can't see that changing, I'm successful. And so that's my origin story, I guess, how I got to where I'm at. I'm here in Nashville, independent uh, American, Americana alternative artist. And I'm, you know, working at, uh, work on a lot of platforms. Just started this podcast this week. This is my third episode. And my goal is to, uh, Russell Brunson has a challenge. I'm taking his class one funnel away to post every day for a year. Holy smokes, that's a big challenge. So I'm just trying to make it to 30 days. We'll get to 30 days and then we'll see. So even just one month. So this is day three, and I'm hoping that I can can meet that and make that. And uh, I'm just I'm just having a blast. And I hope that you you find what I'm doing interesting and that you come along with me on the journey because it's all about the journey for all of us, where we are reaching our goals. There's creativity in all of us. And a great book that I'm, I'm going through right now, if, you're, if you think you have some creativity, is uh, The Artist's Way by Julie, Julia Cameron, or Julie, I think it's Julia Cameron. Uh, this book's been out for like 30 years. And it's a phenomenal book to read and to help you discover your creativity. I encourage you, if you're watching or listening to this, and you have interest, you think you might want to do that, please, please try that. Please get the book and read it and follow follow the recommendations, the exercises. I mean, she has a lot of time-consuming things that she asks you to do, but I've been doing it now. The morning pages is part of it. You get up every morning, you just write. You just throw up on the page, basically, and it just frees things up. I mean, this up here is the biggest advantage we have and also our biggest obstacle because our way of thinking is really what limits us, uh, and, I, and I struggle with that. I'm still working on that. I'm going to the Millionaire Mindset uh, course this weekend, intense three days, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's supposed to rewire your thinking about money and success, primarily money, but also in general about success. I'm so looking forward to that. I saw Tony Robbins. He was life-changing uh, a week, couple of weeks ago. So I'm, a lot of these things are coming in my life, and I'm really excited about what's going to happen. It's just uh, just so exciting. I'm also going to relaunch my snack food business, Wolf Creek Snacks. Look for that. 
I, and I'm so excited. We're going to do it in a new way, and it's it's just going to be great. It's just going to be phenomenal. I'm also launching a uh, a new website talking about anyone. It's called Anyone Can Play Guitar, and I truly believe that. If you have guitar in your closet and you once thought you would pick up guitar, but for whatever reason, life got in the way, it's gathering dust, or maybe you sold it, this program is for you. Because not only are we going to teach you the basics, even for intermediate and advanced, I'm working with my good friend Jimmy Davis, who's been an instructor for 20 years, highly regarded instructor, and he's going to be doing the lessons. We're also going to be doing, which I haven't seen in any other website, we're going to be helping you with the mindset and the beliefs, because you have to believe it. You have to believe it up here, and you have to, I mean, it's, you have to do the work. You have to practice. You have to get it to where your fingers, it's like when you drive. I mean, who who has to think consciously about, okay, now I put my foot on the gas, and I put my foot on the, on the brake. I mean, it's a lot easier now, but I grew up driving a stick shift. I mean, you have to, a lot of coordination. You have to do the clutch and you have to do the gear shift and you have to do the accelerator and you have to do them all at a time. A lot of people struggle with that, but if you get practiced, you don't even think about it. And so how many times have you driven somewhere and you really don't even remember how you got there because your mind was somewhere else. It's in your hands and your feet. Same thing with playing guitar. You get to the point where you don't even think about what you're playing. You're playing a scale and you can have a conversation because it's in your fingers, so to speak. And you can get there, but that's practice. And I truly believe, and my, my partner Jimmy also believes, that anyone can play guitar. Anyway, so that's some of the things that I got going. That's my origin story. I hope you found it interesting. Follow my journey. You can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, podcast. Uh, I, is that all the platforms I'm thinking? Uh, Spotify, SoundCloud. Anyway, um, hope you have a great day. All the best to you. See you next time. Music